Hello and welcome to the Palletful Packs YouTube channel. My name is Alice and I have the December 2021 Palletful Premiere Pack here in front of me and I am super excited to open this up and see what's inside. I haven't looked at the little product list in advance so I'm going to be completely surprised. So let's go ahead and open this up. Oh, I love the red and green. That's so cute. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Copix. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's start with the sticker. We have a super cute little palette full pack sticker here. It's a little holiday cat and they have a cute little hat and they've got the little um, baubles. What do you call this? I don't know, a little string around them and they've got the little, little present. That's so cute. I love that. Okay, let's dive on in. Let's pull out these markers. Ooh, there's graphics ones too. So you're going to get five of these colored Copic sketch markers. The colors that I got were pink, light blue, burnt sienna, forest green, and Prussian blue. Copic sketch markers are awesome. They are double-ended, so you have one side that has this chisel nib, and then the other side has a brush nib, which is really, really great for blending. They're also refillable, so you'll be able to refill them when the ink runs out. And you're also going to get a black alcohol Copic sketch marker. And finally, in addition to being refillable, the nibs on all of these are also replaceable. The next thing that we have are these Marabou Graphics sketch markers. These are also alcohol-based and they're going to have a chisel nib on one side, which is a bit, I think, of a thicker, wider chisel nib than the Copics, but I would have to compare them. And then on the other side, there's a fine bullet nib. So we have a variety of different nib shapes between these and the Copics. The colors that I got are primary yellow, vermilion, cool gray lights, and warm gray. The final thing that I have in here is this Marabou Graphics Marker Pad. So this is 100% cellulose and it's made specifically for alcohol-based markers and has a solvent barrier that prevents ink from bleeding through. The paper is acid-free and light fast. You're gonna get 75 sheets of A4 size. Okay, so this is everything that I got in the December 2021 Premiere Pack. There are so many alcohol markers in here and I can't wait to play around with them and experiment with mixing all the different colors. So let's go ahead and do some swatches and then make some art. So the first thing that I'm going to do is swatches. That gives me the ability to try out all the colors, see what they actually look like on the page. I can try out the different nibs, both sides of the pen so I can see how they work. And also I can see all of the colors together so I can get a good idea of what color options I have and what color palette I'm working with. So I start by doing that with both the Copics and the graphics markers. And then I went ahead and tried to play around with some different blending techniques to see what would work best on this specific paper. Because every paper is a little bit different a little bit unique and you kind of want to have a little bit of a test page so you can try different types of blending and which and see which ones work the most effectively so I started trying to do like a little sphere here with the blue and the green um, and it came out like okay but that was like my first try and I definitely had a bit of a learning curve blending on this paper so once I had done that I tried a couple other techniques and things worked a little bit better normally I like to push a lot of ink through the paper but but that didn't work as well on this paper because it has that specific surface that's meant to prevent bleed through. But because of that, the ink does kind of pool on top so you can actually do some wet on wet techniques, which I kind of discovered during this part. And that was really fun to play with. So there were a lot of different blending techniques and things that you could do. And it's definitely helpful to have just like a test page that you can play around with all that um, and just see how the pens work before you start on a larger piece. So once I had all of the swatches done, I drew out my sketch just using a two or four H pencil. I use a really light pencil so that it doesn't damage the paper. And then I went in with the cool gray, like the lightest gray using the bullet nib and did the outline of the hands. 
Then I added in the pink using the brush side to some of the areas of the hands where blood will kind of rush. So like the knuckles and the fingertips. And then I went in and added the first layer of shading back again with that cool gray using more of the chisels chisel nib side but I also used the bullet nib a little bit as well it was really really useful to have the bullet nib side of the graphics markers because I was able to create more fine lines in certain areas and create kind of more uh, line art type er like lines um, I was going for not a sp like super lined look but there were certain areas that did need more definition and that was really helpful for that so I started with this first layer and for the the, this piece, I wanted these kind of hands, focus on these hands that are holding a bouquet of flowers. And I wanted to keep the hands in like gray with just the pink undertones and then colored nails to keep it really simple and have all of the colors in the flowers. So I kept it really simple with just the two colors of gray and I went in for the second layer of shading using the warm gray which was a little bit darker than I would have initially thought or preferred <laughs> but I was able to work with it and this really taught me a lot about blending on this specific paper. It's definitely best to blend as quickly as you can while it's still wet and then it blends really interestingly with this almost wet on wet look and it really doesn't bleed through at all. I put on a lot a lot a lot of ink on this paper and there was no bleed through to the paper below at all which was really really cool using this chisel nib was really helpful because I was able to kind of carve out swaths of shadow which was really nice especially on this these fingertip areas where certain cast shadows are and it was really helpful for me to define larger areas of shadow on the hands. Hands can be really tricky and one tip that I do have for hands even though I don't consider myself like an expert in drawing hands at all is to really start by breaking it down into like basic shapes and try not to forget that hands have like a more of a thickness to them than you would think. Um, I feel like a lot of times when people draw hands they end up being too flat so you want to make sure that you get the side of that hand. Um, um, and yeah, that really helped with getting that. I don't know if that made sense, but hopefully it did. Little tip for drawing hands. Um, once I had the hands in there and I put some yellow on the fingernails as an added touch, I went in and started establishing the bouquet. And this was a little bit chaotic and a little bit just kind of go with the flow. I just kind of picked my colors and started started doodling, just started throwing in some shapes there that kind of looked like flowers and just really like zoning out and f vibing into that pattern of flowers, I guess, if that makes sense. I really didn't have too much of a technique for this. I was just really trying to be loose. And then I went over those like kind of looser shapes and started defining things a little bit more with some darker colors or some contrasting colors. I liked to add some of the orange into the pink but it was also really pretty to add some yellow into the pink and when you kind of mixed the colors together a little bit using one color sometimes that color will transfer to the tip of the brush and you can get some really kind of unique two tones if that makes sense you kind of saw that during the swatching uh, page and I actually wanted to play with that concept more by trying to actually touch the tips of the markers together but I never got around to doing that uh, but that might be a really cool blending technique that would work really well as well. Once I had the loose kind of rough shapes in, I went in and filled more of the background in. I started with the blues because I knew I was going to go over with green and then ultimately yellow. And that yellow was going to unify everything because that yellow was going to work on top of the blues to turn it into the green of the stems. But it was also going to work on top of the yellows, pinks, and oranges of the flowers. So it was going to help unify and tie things together, especially in those little areas where the flowers were meeting the background. And if you use markers, then you know what I mean sometimes there can be like a weird edge between where two colors meet and this definitely helped with softening that edge so that's kind of what my process was here I just built things up when you're working with a limited color palette it's really helpful to remember that you can blend colors like on the page so you can lay down a blue and put down a yellow on top and get different tones of greens um, I think sometimes with markers uh, and to an extent color pencils, we can get a little bit too focused in 
we need that specific color, like we need multiple colors of green or whatever, um, forgetting that we can still blend with the primaries in things like pens. Uh, maybe that's just me, but <laughs> I feel like I get sucked into just trying to stick to the specific pens that I have and not blend the colors to create unique colors versus just blending them to create soft shading. I hope that made sense. At this point, I'm just going through and continuing to define the flowers a little bit more. I want this to be pretty loose and expressive, but I do also want it to be like obvious that it's flowers. So I was trying to find a good line between giving it enough definition and not giving it too much. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Then finally, I went through with that warm gray and I used the bullet nib to add a little bit more line definition to the edges of the hands, just because I really felt like they needed that just to kind of pop out and to highlight the shape of the hands. Once I had done that, I just added in some final little details with the darker markers, just adding in a little bit more contrast and those finishing touches that you always do right at the end of the piece. I used the black Copic marker to sign it, and that is the piece that I made for this month's box. I really hope that you all liked this video, and I hope that it had some helpful tips for you on how to blend and use your alcohol markers. And if you'd like to join the Palletful Packs family, then there's a link in the description box below to our website, and you can get your own box there. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!